Now, when you look at hemisection of the spinal cord, and um, let's say we'll start with motor tracts, and we talk about ipsilateral and contralateral. So um, we're saying that the corticospinal tracts, the lesion is upper motor neuron, and it's ipsilateral. So you know the cord, and I'd say this side is affected, and its right side is affected. Your corticospinal tracts are here, the main ones. These are actually all crossed already in the medulla. So they come from the brain. They cross over in the medulla. And then they travel down the spinal cord this way. And at this level, this is where you see them. What these will do, these tracks, the fibers peel off. They supply the anterior horn cells. And from here, they go out and they control the body on this side. So you can understand that if this tract is damaged and this is the lesion is on the right side, which side of the body is going to be affected? It's going to be the right side. So therefore, it is ipsilateral. Since it is the tract, the descending tract which is being affected, that's why it is upper motor neuron. And uh, the anterior horn cells which are affected at this point, these are lower motor neurons. So at the level of the lesion, you'll have the lower motor neuron. Uh, kind of um, lesion. Now, the same in the same manner, if you look at uh, the sensory fibers, so let's take the sensory fibers, and if I was to erase all of this here, and look at sensory fibers now, and I use again, so let's, I'm just going to do one, so let's say the dorsal columns, so if you look up here at the dorsal columns, these are fibers which are traveling up this way, so the nucleus, and they are traveling up this way. So if this tract is damaged, it is coming from the right side, so the right side of the body is sending the impulses going up this way. That's why dorsal columns is going to be ipsilateral. On the other hand, if you look at the spinothalamic tract, then you notice up here, the spinothalamic tract is going to be contralateral. So, you know, if you looked at the lateral spinothalamic tract, let's say present here, this is actually fibers which have come from this side. So you can see when damaged here, where is the information coming from? From the left side. So that's why this is contralateral. So for the sensory tracts, it's like that. And for the same reason for the motor tracts in the descending, because it is these fibers, the corticospinal, are going to synapse on the anterior horn cells here and then go here they are going to affect the same side of the body. If the lesion was in the medulla before the crossing, so if it ha happened here, so you can see the lesion is on the left side, then the effect, where is this finally destined for, for the right side, then the effect is contralateral. So the, whenever we talk of the effect, it is always based on the lesion and the side of the body which is affected. So if the lesion is on the right side and we see that the right side is affected, then we call it ipsilateral. If the region, the lesion is on the right side and the opposite side of the body, that's the left side is affected, then we call it contralateral.